Hi and welcome to Export Kit. In this example, we're going to demonstrate optimizing your image assets with your HTML output. So what this will do is under normal circumstances, you can tell that with our magnificent uh, layout here, we have the same image that's used twice with these artboards and the same image that's used twice uh, with these artboards. Now, Export Kit will create a individual image for each of these. So we're going to look at how we can actually now modify it so that we use the same image in the output uh, regardless of where we use it. Now with a small project like this, you can easily tell that you know it might not be necessary, but if we're exporting a hundred pages, you might not want to use an image a hundred times. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look. Now remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates. And what we're going to do first is we're going to just export as is. Now if we take a look at the image assets, you'll see and let's actually just find what this layer is called. Well, ironically it's called image. That's a magnificent name. So we have image, uh, they're all called image. Image, images, image, image, they're actually called different names. <laughs> so uh, this is called images. Well, this is called image. So you'll definitely get two individual uh, renders for this, I should say. So um, in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this really quickly so that we're going to use the same image for each of these and for these two as well. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to our layers just so we can actually view them easier and we're going to want to create an artboard and this is going to be our global artboard so we can manage our CSS styles. Now where you place global uh, relatively to the stage is irrelevant but you must have global at the very top of your artboard so if it happens to be below just simply move it up. Now once we have our global what we're going to do is we're going to copy the images that we want to use. So we want to take the largest image, uh, just for keepsake, we don't want it uh, stretching, we'd rather it shrink. So let's use one image, oh, it actually has text on it. So let's actually just leave this called photo. What we're going to do in our global is we're going to create CSS styles. Now within our CSS styles, what we have is we have an individual photo. This will be basically a background image in CSS. And let's actually take the larger one of these. And for argument's sake, let's increase the size of the artboard. Okay, so now we have two global CSS images that we're going to use. Let's rename them uh, just for better conventions. Let's call one yoga. And let's call the other beach. So now that we have both our CSS styles, what we're going to need to do is actually now map them to the individual content. Now here where we have image, because we're using CSS styles, we don't actually need to use uh, an actual image per se. What we can do is we can actually just render uh, the image itself onto a shape. So we're going to create a square. Now what a square will do is a square is basically just a div in the HTML output. So that will ensure that you're not creating additional image assets. So let's delete the original image. And what we're going to call this is our yoga pick. But we're going to add a style to it so it will reference the actual CSS image that we created. Now because this is an actual shape, what we can do is just copy the shape. We're going to reuse that style. And let's replace this one. Let's add it inside the group. So we're just going to ensure it's maintaining the same space as the original picture. Let's remove the original. And let's do the same now for our beach pick. Let's paste our original over, but let's make sure it's just above the image that we want. Drag it to the same size. Now rather than yoga, this was our beach. So let's remove the original. We can copy this. And we're going to reuse it here. Again, let's just drag it over our original image, remove the original, let's resize it to fit, then remove the original. So now what we have, and although this will look blank, is we're actually using now a lot of wireframes to create our content rather than generate uh, numerous images in the output. So if we were to go back to our original one, let's actually just take a look at a few of the pages. 
one, two more. This is the photos. Now there are a couple of errors that you could tell came out in the output here. Uh, this element itself is pretty large and there's something, it's a BG dark, why is that so large? Export Kit will export everything within your output. So when you have uh, basically situations like this, it will actually render the content, although the artboard itself does not make the content visible. That's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, the next thing that I also saw was that there are a couple errors here. So the text, it looks like rather than individual text layers, and this is a very common error with designers, this is one text layer. You cannot use tabs in your design simply because HTML does not tab the same <laughs> as XD does. Uh, the tab stops in HTML is very different. So these should actually be individual text layers, not a single texter. That's basically why we saw that in the output. Actually, I think it's here, yes. You'll see that these are all one complete text layer, which is what was created. Now we're missing content here, so let's actually just correct all this. Uh, this video here, we could have gone SVG, but that's pointless. Let's just render this as an image. And for argument's sake, because this isn't really a menu with individual items, let's just render this as an image also. If you were to fix this, you'd have to create five individual text layers with the names that you want, so you actually have the objects. So we could use the same logic to correct a few more of the SVG elements. Now you don't want to use SVG with CSS images uh, simply because the div will render as an SVG. You cannot prevent that. Um, unless you use a class tag, which makes it a little bit more complex. So we're going to ensure that we only have CSS images selected, and then let's export. Now you'll see in the skins, rather than have multiple images, we now have styles with the single images that we're looking for. So let's take a look at the output. So you'll see that our image rendered, although in our design, we only have a square. Let's check the other pages. Our photo rendered. And our onboard rendered. Now, little things like this where the text is slightly off, uh, in the design, you can easily correct this by simply just increasing the size of the text layer, ensure that it's a paragraph block, and just simply increase it. We're going to export again. You'll see now that it renders perfectly.